This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. We'll start with problems and after that, the topics that we are going to discuss is uh, different types of redox reactions and methods for balancing redox reaction. So we'll start with this problem. Which of the following reactions is an example of redox reaction? Here we have total four reactions given. And in all these uh, reactions, we have different types of xenon compounds. Okay. So if we want to know whether the reaction falls under the type of redox reaction or not, we just have to check whether oxidation number it is changed before reaction and after reaction, or there is no change. At least for one atom, there must be change in oxidation number. Otherwise, it will not be considered as redox reaction. Now for the first reaction, xenon F6. There are a total six xenon fluorine bond. Now fluorine is more electronegatives. So that is why for each xenon fluorine bond, we will consider plus one charge. So total six xenon fluorine bonds. So that is why total charge, uh, total oxidation number it will be plus six. Now for water, it is simple. It is always plus one and minus two for oxygen. Now what about the product that is XeO? A4. Now here oxygen and fluorine more electronegative. Now if we want to know what is the oxidation number for xenon, suppose it is X. So X plus minus 2 for one oxygen atom, then there will be 4 into minus 1 for 4 fluorine atom, overall it is 0. So X will be equal to, again we are getting plus 6. That means before reaction, after reaction, there is no change in the oxidation number. And for HF, it is plus 1, minus 1. So here we do not have any atom for which we can say there is a change in oxidation number. So in this reaction, we cannot say it is under the category of redox reaction. So this is not correct option. Now the next one, here again we have xenon, hexafluoride and water just like the previous reaction. So we already know what is oxidation state, it is plus six. Now what about this product? This is also common, xeo 2 f 2 this is new. Now for XeO2, F2, again I am considering the oxidation number 6. So 6 plus minus 2 into 2 for oxygen. And 2 into minus 1 for fluorine, overall it is 0. So X is again 2 into 2 minus 4 and minus 2, that means it is plus 6. So again we are getting plus 6. So there is no change in the oxidation number. Now the third reaction here, we have different compounds, xenon F4. Now it is just like xenon F6. In case of xenon F6, there is total six xenon fluorine bond. But when it is xenon F4, there will be total four XeF bonds. So total positive charge, it will be plus four for xenon. Now for O2F2, here as fluorine is more electronegative, so there is total negative charge minus two coming from fluorine. So total positive charge, it must be plus two. Now two oxygen atom. So for each oxygen atom, it is plus one. So this is the oxidation state for uh, oxygen. Now what about in the product side? In the product side, we have xenon F6 and this is plus six. For oxygen, it is zero. That means here xenon is having, there is some change in oxidation number. Before reaction, it is plus four. After reaction, it is plus six. That means it is gain of electron, gain of two electron, right? And for oxygen, it is from plus one to zero. That means it has from plus one to zero. Okay, so that means there is also gain of electron. But whatever it is, you have to remember one thing that it is change in oxidation number. So whenever we have change in oxidation number, that means it should be considered a redox reaction. So from, sorry, I have said it is uh, gain of electron for xenon, no, for not xenon. From plus four to plus six, it is basically loss of electron. Or oxygen point of view, it is gain of electron because if one species is gaining electron, another species must be losing electron. But whatever it is, whether it is oxidation reduction, irrespective of that, it one thing is clear that there is change in oxidation number. So option two, that should be the correct option. Now, why the last one is not correct? Here we have xenon fluorine. So total positive charge, it is plus two. 
and we have another compound pa5 now fluorine is more electronegative total four uh, five fluorine that means total positive charge and there is single phosphorus so oxidation number for phosphorus is plus five now after reaction we are getting this type of cation and anion so individually if i focus on this species suppose i am first focusing on the cation overall charge is plus one for xenon suppose it is x for fluorine it is minus one overall charge plus one so the oxidation state of xenon that is this x this should be two that means before reaction it is two after reaction also it is two now focus on this anionic part pf6 suppose for phosphorus oxidation number is y there are total six fluorine that means six into minus one overall charge for this anion is minus one so the value of y is six minus one which is five so from the point of view of phosphorus it is plus five before reaction plus five also after reaction so that is why there is no change in oxidation number so correct option is option three okay so in this way just by checking there is change in oxidation number or not at least for one atom then we will be able to understand whether it should be considered under redox reaction or not the redox reaction among the following is so here we have same type of reaction okay but uh, here it is not given in the reaction format it is given in uh, that is in statement format it is given so the first option it is saying that formation of ozone ozone is o3 from atmospheric oxygen that means o2 so the first reaction is formation of o3 starting from o2 in presence of sunlight that means initially it is o2 after it is 3 now see even you don't have to balance it because it is the question is all about there is change in oxidation number or not so we don't have to balance now overall as it is in elemental state and whether it, it is diatomy it is triatomy but whatever it is overall the molecule is neutral so that is why we uh, cannot say that this should be uh, considered as redox reaction fine because overall charge it is zero what about the second reaction in case of the second one here if i write the reaction there is a coordination compound cobalt six water molecules directly attached with it then we after uh, finishing this third bracket there is total positive charge three plus whatever species we have inside the third bracket total positive charge is three plus so to balance this there is total three negative charge that means total three chloride ion so this complex it is reacting with agno3 if we actually balance it, there will be three AgNO3. Now, what reaction is going on? Here, yeah, reaction is cobalt again. So, inside the coordination sphere, there is actually no change. It is still three plus. Now, this three Cl now it is replaced by three NO3 that is coming from silver nitrate, and there is three AgCl precipitation, silver chloride. So we just have to check whether there is oxidation number change or not. Now previously, for chlorine it is minus one. Uh, for each individual atom it is minus one charge. Here also it is minus one. This is plus one. This is also plus one. And if you consider only this anion, there is no change in the anion. It is still that is before reaction. It is nitrate ion. If I write it like this, it is nitrate ion carrying single negative charge. Here also it is nitrate. So obviously, even we don't have to go to details. What is the oxidation number of nitrogen? Because there is no change in the anion structure. So obviously, the oxidation number of nitrogen is still same. What about cobalt? Now see, this part, there is no change. And there is three plus charge. Overall, water molecule is neutral. So the oxidation state of cobalt is also plus three. Here also it is plus three. We know when we have discussed the rules, remember, there was one rule which is specially for coordination molecule where it is mentioned for coordination molecules this type of ligands that are directly attached to metals or the anions that are present outside you can 
directly consider the charge. So that is why I'm not individually considering what is the oxidation number of hydrogen or oxygen. Overall, this molecule is neutral. So that is why this three plus charge, there is no contribution coming from water as a whole. But as it is so, this three plus charge that is completely coming from cobalt. So the oxidation number of cobalt is plus three. And as there is no change in this part of this molecule, so that is why it is still plus three. So the ultimately the conclusion is there is no change in oxidation number. Come to the third reaction. It is basically reaction between acid and base. H2SO4, NaOH, two replaceable hydrogen, so two molecules of NaOH required. And there will be formation of salt, sodium sulfate, and two molecules of water. So this is basically neutralization reaction, right? What uh, acid plus base, and there is formation of salt and water. And in this type of neutralization reaction, basically it is simply ion exchange. H plus initially it is with sulfate ion, but now it is with oxide ion. If I break this molecule, it is like this H plus and O2 minus, right? And here sodium, it is with HO minus ion. But now it is with sulfate. But whatever it is, there is no change in oxidation number. And we know for sodium it is always plus one. So here also it is plus one. This is also plus one. Sulfate, if you as a whole see the anion SO4, the SO4 anion is still present. So individually you don't have to focus on the oxidation number of sulfur. As a whole, the anionic, uh, that is anionic part is same. Before reaction, after reaction, it is still sulfate. That means SO4 2 minus. So obviously there is no change in the oxidation number of salt. If, still, if you are interested, it's basically plus six, but it doesn't matter because the anion is still same. And hydrogen also plus one here, and in water also it is plus one. Oxygen also minus two here. This is also minus two. So there is no change in oxidation, right? So only one option is left, which is the last option, because the first three, after checking, we have seen it is not redox. So the last one is basically combination of dinitrogen and dioxygen. Very simple. This is dinitrogen, this is dioxygen, and it will produce nitrogen oxide, uh, which is basically nitric oxide. There is different types of oxides of nitrogen, NO, NO2, N2O, then N2O4, N2O5, different types. But in this case, it is 2NO. So initially, these two are in elemental form. So it is zero, this is also zero, right? But after reaction, if you see, this is basically combination type of reaction. We'll, after finishing this question, we'll basically start different types of redox reaction. There you will see, uh, there are some combination reactions. Combination reaction means you are taking two species and you are getting a single species. A plus B equal to C, this is combination reaction. So same thing you are seeing here, this is combination reaction. And if you focus on NO, nitrogen is less electronegative. So that is why if it is minus two, it has to be plus two. So with respect to nitrogen C, it is plus two. That's, that means it is loss of electron. With respect to oxygen, it is gain of electron. So there is change in oxidation number. So that is why the last option should be considered as redox reaction, not the first three, okay? Now we will start different types of redox reactions. But remember, not just any combination reaction should be considered as a redox reaction. Some combination reactions may be there which are not redox reaction. But some redox combination reactions may be redox reaction. So these four common uh, redox reactions basically are observed. First one is combination, then we have Decomposition reaction, which is basically the reverse uh, type of combination, then single displacement and disproportion. This type, this last type, when we will actually discuss in the next slide, you will see this is clear. That is, in any disproportionation reaction, you will see it will always be there will be change in oxidation. Number. So it is always a redox reaction. But for Combination and decomposition, it may not be always so, okay? 
so first combination reaction in general format if i write it is combination of two species you are getting c now as we know if we consider any reaction whether it is combination decomposition single whatever it is one condition must be fulfilled if we want to say this reaction and that condition is oxidation number must be changed right that is the species should undergo a reduction or oxidation now in this case when we have this type of reaction suppose i am giving you one example calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide it is producing cacl3 so in this case species a is calcium oxide this is a this is b this is c but it is matching combination reaction type but is this redox reaction for that if we want to know we have to check oxidation number change or not calcium it is from group 2 alkaline earth metal and we know it is always having plus 2 oxidation state unless it is in free state suppose simple metallic form then it is zero but if it is in any compound it is always plus 2 not uh, it is also mentioned in the rules and it is plus 2 the oxygen is minus 2 now for co2 it is uh, for each oxygen it is minus 2 so total negative charge will be minus 4 so total positive charge is coming on carbon because carbon is less electronegative so this is the oxidation number for carbon what about carbonate so if it is plus 2 this whole anion is co3 2 minus 2 negative charge now for each oxygen it is minus 2 that means total negative charge minus 6 overall charge is minus 2 and for carbon i am writing here x because i am calculating so x is 6 minus 2 that means it is plus 4 so there is no change in oxidation number in this reaction for any atom but it is also combination so it is not that just by fulfilling the condition of combination reaction we should consider it as redox combination reaction no that is not the case it is fulfilling the criteria of combination reaction but it is not fulfilling the criteria of redox reaction okay so that is why as here we are discussing different types of reaction so though it is combination but still it has to be redox reaction also so if we want to give any example another example now you will see c plus o2 it is producing co2 now this is actually combination reaction as well as it is redox reaction why because here ox carbon is zero this is minus 2 so it is also zero both are in elemental state right so that is why remember for any combination reaction if it has to be redox there must be at least one species in the left hand side in elemental form at least one species otherwise it will not be redox now after reaction it is plus 4 and for oxygen it is minus 2 remember in the previous slide also this last reaction this is combination reaction as well as redox reaction and here also as i have said at least one species must be in the elemental form so both the species basically in elemental form so this is actually the example where we can say this is combination reaction as well as it is redox but this is not redox reaction though combination but it is not redox fine now the second type is decomposition which is the reverse of this a plus b c so as if you have one species and it is decomposed to a plus b now if i am giving you this example suppose calcium carbonate just i am reversing the if you heat calcium carbonate it will decompose to co2 and co but we have already calculated the oxidation number and we already know there is actually no change so this is not redox but another example if we see water molecule If I balance it, even if you do do not balance it, it doesn't matter anything. So here it is plus one, this is minus two, but these two are in elemental form. So just like the previous reaction, here also you have to remember, just by matching this format, we cannot say that this is decomposition redox reaction. You also have to fulfill the 
main criteria of redox reaction which is change in oxidation number so that is why this reaction is not redox but the second one as you can see now one of the species in the right hand side should be in the elemental form otherwise change in oxidation number is not possible so here we have change in oxidation number with respect to hydrogen point of view it is from plus 1 to 0 acceptance of electron and for oxygen it is removal of electron from minus 2 to 0 but oxidation number is changed so that is why it is decomposition reaction next type two types single displacement and disproportion single displacement so in single displacement general format if i write a plus b c so see here a it will react with any of these species and the other species it will as if a is replacing b from b c so that is why it is single displacement so here we will give example very common example is copper sulfate zinc it is producing now zinc sulfate and cu now if we look at the oxidation number copper sulfate we know this anion it carries minus two charge that means total positive charge will be over copper now zinc it is in elemental metallic form it is zero here it is zero that means there is change in oxidation number from plus 2 to 0 that means it has accepted two electron it is basically reduction and zinc has lost electron there is no change in the anionic part sulfur is before after it is same plus 6 oxidation state but here at least one atom there must be oxidation number change it is basically loss of two electron so this is oxidation here zinc is supplying electron to copper so zinc is acting as reducing agent it is reducing copper 2 plus to copper 0 and itself is getting oxidized so copper sulfate is the oxidizing agent another example bromine 2 potassium iodide kbr and iodine Bromine is zero. It is simple. Uh, that is in elemental gaseous form. It is a normal, uh, naturally uh, bromine is obtained as diatomic molecule. So it is zero. Potassium iodide. It is plus one. It is minus. That means we have iodide. Sorry, we have iodide ion. But after reaction, we have potassium bromide. So this is plus one. This is minus one. And now it is in elemental. So with respect to bromine, this is basically gain of electron. So this is reduction. But if we see with respect to iodine, it is from minus 1 to 0. That means it is removal of electron. So this is oxidation. Here iodide ion is supplying electron to bromine. That means iodide ion is actually the reducing agent. Or you can say as the whole potassium iodide is the reducing agent. But better you say iodide is the reducing agent because iodide is actually oxidized because in this part there is no change right so that is why this is another example of single displacement not just single displacement it is also redox now the last one you will see it is always uh, that is it will always be redox rich fine now if we uh, see the definition of disproportionation reaction here I have written the general format, but for disproportionate reaction, there is no such general format we can write. But the definition is here you will have one species, suppose I'm writing species A. Now the same species, it will be converted to two different types. So S, I'm writing here S1 and S2 because I want to keep the identity same. That means same element, there will be change in its oxidation number in both ways. That is, there will be gain of electron for the same element and there will be loss of electron for the same element. That means, what we can say as a whole, same species will undergo oxidation and reduction simultaneously. So, once we see example, uh, it will be clear. So, this species, it may be, it, that is, it, it will be 
it may be a compound also or it may be simply um that is any elemental form that is also possible so if we see this example here we have chlorine which is reacting with potassium hydroxide it is producing potassium chloride and also potassium chlorate clo3 minus that is the name of the anion clo3 minus 1 the name of this anion is chlorate and cl minus you already know it is chloride and what now if we see this is actually the species if we just simply compare suppose this is s s1 is kcl s2 is kclo3 so here you have to focus on which atom just focus on the atom chlorine because with respect to chlorine there is two types of oxidation number change so chlorine it is zero it is in elemental form in kcl its oxidation state is minus 1 but in kclo3 here its oxidation number is plus 5 but how to know that it is simple so suppose for chlorine you are just calculating the oxidation number so first i will consider it as x so x plus 3 oxygen that means total negative charge will be minus 6 overall it has charge minus 1 so x is plus 5 so in this way you can calculate the oxidation number of chlorine in the ion chlorate so with respect to this that is 0 to plus 5 it is basically so this one 0 to plus 5 it is basically loss of electron so that is why here it is result is oxidation but the other conversion that is chlorine is converted to kcl this is reduction because from 0 to minus 1 obviously this is reduction so in this case the species s it is in elemental but it is not necessary it may be in any in compound form also you just have to check whether for a particular element or atom there is oxidation number change or not now another example i am giving 2no2 reacting with water it is producing hno3 acid nitric acid another acid is also produced which is nitrous acid now in this case we will focus on this element n so it is in compound form it is not simple nitrogen gas in the previous case it is chlorine element but here it is nitrogen oxide dioxide now for each oxygen it is minus 2 so two oxygen total negative charge minus 4 so it will be plus 4 now come to this side it is h plus that means total negative charge for no3 is minus 1 So if it is minus one, what is the oxidation number for nitrogen? Suppose it is x, x plus minus six, which is for three oxygen. Overall charge minus one, so x is plus five. So here I will write plus five. Similarly, if you do the calculation for the ion NO two minus, then it will be x plus minus four because we have two oxygen. Again, overall charge minus one, so x is plus three. so now see initially the oxidation number for nitrogen is plus 4 it is converted to plus 5 which is loss of electron so it is oxidation but another species also we are getting which is hno2 from plus 4 to plus 3 it is gain of electron so it is reduction so same species basically it is the nitrogen atom where there is change in oxidation number but as a whole also you can say that no2 it's getting oxidized and reduced simultaneously but actual which atom is there is change in oxidation number it is nitrogen not oxygen or hydrogen okay so these are the four types of reactions redox reactions that we observe fine now based on this if we uh, solve this question it will be clear it is asking an example of disproportionation reaction here you have total four reactions all are different we have to check which one is disproportionate now the first reaction is mno4 minus mno4 minus what is the oxidation number of mn suppose it is x so x total negative charge minus 8 overall charge outside it is minus 1 so x is plus 7 so this is plus 7 
alkyl is i minus after reaction it is zero after reaction mn is having oxidation number 2 plus so from plus 7 to plus 2 it is reduction that is fine and from iodide to zero that is loss of electron but we just have to check whether same atom there is simultaneous oxidation or reduction but that is not present here right mn is only converted to from plus 7 to plus 2 and iodine is only one type of change minus 1 to 0 so it is not disproportionate yes reduction oxidation is occurring but it is not disproportionate you can say this is a redox reaction because there is change in oxidation number but you cannot say it is disproportionate reaction right come to the next one nabr it is plus 1 this is minus 1 this is 0 then we have again plus 1 minus 1 this is 0 now this reaction is basically remember a type of single displacement where Br is replaced by Cl and you are getting a new sodium solid which is sodium chloride. Previously it is sodium bromide, now it is sodium chloride. So here also it is not disproportionate. Come to the third one. Here it is plus 7. We already checked MnO4 minus, it is plus 7. What about K2MnO4? Now for K2MnO4, which anion we have here? Total positive charge is plus 2 because we have 2 potassium. That means for this part, total negative charge is MnO4 2 minus. Just see the difference. This is MnO4 minus. This is MnO4 2 minus. So here, what is the oxidation number of Mn? Suppose it is x. x plus minus 8. Overall charge is minus 2. So now the value of x is plus 6. So here I will write plus 6. Then we have another compound of manganese, which is MnO2. Oxygen, total negative charge, minus 4, 2 oxygen atom. So this will be plus 4. So same species Mn, it is converted to plus 6 by gaining electron. And it is also converted to plus 4 by again gaining electron. So should we consider it as disproportionation? Because from plus 7, it is converted to plus 6 and it is converted to plus 4. So in both cases, it is plus electron. Here it is one plus 1 electron. Here it is plus 3 electron. So we should not consider it as disproportionate, right? It is true that same species, there is change in oxidation number. But it is not that same species is undergoing reduction oxidation simultaneously. In both cases, it is gain of electron. Okay, so this is very tricky, this third one. So be careful. What about the last one? CuBr, it is plus one because total negative charge is minus one. When it is CuBr2, now it is plus two. And copper is elemental form, metallic form, it is zero. So from plus one, it is converted to plus two. It is loss of electron, so this is oxidation. But plus 1, it is also converted to 0 by gaining electron. So this is reduction. So now you can say same atom. Basically, from if you say species, it is CuBr converted to uh, CuBr2 by oxidation and converted to copper by reduction. But if you say which atom it is, it is basically with respect to copper atom. From plus 1, it is becoming plus 2. And it is also becoming zero. So when it is becoming plus two, it is basically oxidation. And this one is reduction. Now you can say this is disproportionate, not the third reaction. So this should be actually the correct reaction, not the third. Fine. So it is not that simple change of oxidation state to two different species. Sorry. Two different species, it will be considered as this. No, that is not the case. This is not disproportionation because there is only reduction, no oxidation. So be very careful. It should be reduction, oxidation simultaneously. Then only it will be disproportionate. Which one of the following is an example of disproportionation reaction? So this type of question is very common uh, from this chapter. That is, you just have to recognize from different options, which one is redox? The first piece is, see, this anion we have already seen in the previous problem, MnO4 2 minus. When it is MnO4 minus, 
oxidation number is plus 7 but here it is plus 6 so same calculation i am not doing it again i have already done it in the previous slide right and this is plus 7 this is plus 4 now from plus 6 it is converted to plus 7 and plus 4 so when it is plus 7 it is basically loss of electron when it is plus 4 it is basically gain of electron so these should be considered as this proportion but we will also check the other options mno for 2 minus again same species if so it is plus 6 then we have mno2 only one species there is no other species to consider so here we have only reduction and electron is also there basically it is one half reaction that is uh, what i mean by half reaction is that uh, probably in will in today's class will i will not be able to discuss that because of uh, time probably in the next class what is half reaction you will have clear idea right now just understand by half reaction that we know when there is redox reaction oxidation reduction occurring simultaneously but suppose if i am writing only the oxidation part or the reduction part it, it is not complete reaction it is the half reaction so that is why i am calling it half reaction and here you can see mn is simply accepting electron in acidic medium and it is converted to plus 4 state so this is basically only reduction there is no such oxidation and it is also not disproportionate come to the third one mno4 minus so this is plus 7 it is converted to plus 2 so this is basically reduction iodide from minus 1 now it is 0 so that means it is oxidation but the criteria of disproportionation is not present what about the last one mno4 minus this is plus 7 here we have h2o3 2 minus now h2o3 2 minus if we write it in the salt form it is basically you can write it as na2h2o3 okay but uh, if i simply remove this cationic part then it will be that is the only anion if i am writing then it should be written as h2o3 2 minus this is called io sulfate io so if i am uh, that is if you consider the total salt it will be sodium thiosulfate but if you are writing only the anionic form you will call it thiosulfate anion okay and after reaction it is so4 2 minus now where we have so4 2 minus and here we have is 2 or 3 2 minus. and here from plus 7 now it is plus 4 so from plus 7 to plus 4 it is gain of electron so this is basically reduction so what about the oxidation number of sulfur in this case so see here so4 we know it is plus 6 but if we consider it for s2 or 3 2 minus it will be suppose it is x so it is 2x total negative charge minus 6 overall there is 2 negative charge so 2x is equal to minus 2 plus 6 that means it is 4 so x we are getting value as uh, plus 2 basically uh, it is the average oxidation state if you see the detailed structure of s2 or 3 Though here detail structure is not required, but still I am showing it. And here correct option is obviously the first one. And we also got our answer because here X value average oxidation state is plus 2. So before reaction it is plus 2. After reaction it is plus 6. So from plus 2 to plus 6 it has lost electron. So this is basically oxidation. But uh, just for extra information I am showing. Here are two different types of sulfur atom we have. Suppose this is sulfur A, this is sulfur B. So if you focus on sulfur A, there is only sulfur sulfur bond. So it has oxidation number 0. But if you focus on a sulfur number B, there is total 1, 2, 3, 4. Total 4 sulfur oxygen bond. This bond we will not consider because it is bond between same atom. So just consider this 4 sulfur oxygen bond. So that is why total oxidation number it will be 4. 
so individually if you see it is 0 and plus 4 but overall average oxidation number is plus 2 but whatever it is just you simply consider it plus 2 so same species is not undergoing reduction oxidation here so that is why it is not correct option correct option is option a next we have balancing of redox reaction and here you can see two different methods are there basically in the second method which is ion electrode method in that method is also sometimes called half reaction method so probably in today's class uh, if we get time we will be able to know what is half reaction so this time i have just used in the previous uh, problem remember in the previous problem option number b that reaction is basically half reaction so when we balance any redox reaction there are some specific uh, ways that we follow and simply following that we will be easily able to uh, balance the redox reactions fine so there are basically two methods oxidation number method and the second method is ion electrode method or it is also called half reaction method now depending on what type of reactions are given you can choose which method to consider mostly when it is oxidation number method if any reaction is given in a neutral format i mean to say there will be no mention of ions no negative charge carrying uh, species or positive charge carrying species there is no cation or anion neutral molecules are given in that case oxidation number will help number method will, will be better for you though it is up to you which uh, once the discussion discussion is complete you yourself uh, can decide which one you are finding more comfortable but uh, i'm just saying for general information if it is given in neutral format first method will be better but mostly it is given in the questions that you will find it is given in ion electron method okay uh, sorry it is given in ionic format so in that case uh, this method will help you and mostly the uh, second method is used because most of the time reactions are given in ionic form like you see kmno4 this species you have seen several times and mostly it is given not in kmno form form this is a neutral form but ionic form when i am saying it will be given like this simply permanganate ion mno4 minus so if it is given in that form the second method is better and sometimes in the question it is directly asking that uh, solve it by this method or that method that is i'm talking about lengthy question not uh, mcq type of question in mcq type of question when uh, you have problems related to balancing redox you can choose any method that is up to you but if it is directly mentioned in the question which method you have to follow then you have to follow that method only. but there is something uh, that is no real difference between these two methods it is basically same it is just for our uh, convenience sometimes we follow the first one sometimes the second one so they are just different ways of keeping track of the electrons transferred during the reaction so one thing is clear that in redox reaction whatever is the number of electrons that is lost in case of one species obviously the same number of electrons will be gained by some other species and it has to be always because you cannot create electron you cannot destroy it so it has to be always like this the number of electron lost it is gained by some other species so both are based on the same principle that in oxidation reduction reaction total number of electrons donated by the reducing agent because reducing agent always donates electron it will be equal to the total number of electrons that will be gained by the oxidizing agent the first method is based on the change in oxidation number of reductant and the oxidant so suppose we have any reaction i am simply writing x y and z so what you will do you just simply write the oxidation number over this atom and then uh, this is the way uh, initially we start we will see the details obviously so here we focus on the oxidation number that is why the name is oxidation number method 
And the second method is based on splitting the redox reaction into two half reactions. So suppose the reaction is given in ionic format, you what you do, you just simply break it into reaction. Remember the previous problem we have seen, one half reaction. So there will be two half reaction. One is for oxidation, another one is for reduction. And then we check, suppose in the reduction reaction, the number of electrons uh, gained that we try to equalize the number in the two half reaction then we add these two half reaction again that is the method now sometimes one method will be more convenient than the other method as i have said if it is not clearly mentioned in the question you can follow any method that is up to you but if it is mentioned then we simply have to follow that but it depends sometimes the first one is better Sometimes the same. Here we will first start with the oxidation number method. And in oxidation number method, here we have taken this reaction, which is the reaction between one of the oxide of iron. There are different types of oxide of iron, uh, but we have taken Fe2O3. It is reacting with carbon monoxide, oxide of carbon. We are getting iron. So you can easily understand iron, it is in elemental form after reaction, but before reaction, it is in oxide form. So there will be some positive oxidation state before reaction, after reaction, it is zero. And CO is converted to another oxide of carbon, which is CO2. Now this reaction, it is not in ionic format. It is neutral. All the species, as you can see, there is no uh, negative charge, no positive charge, so they, they are neutral, right? So for this, how we will start, we will assign oxidation numbers to the atoms of all the elements. So here, how many elements present? We have here iron, we have carbon, we have oxygen. Total three elements we have. So we will write the oxidation number first. So here for Fe2O3, total negative charge is minus six, total positive charge is plus six. We have two iron, so individual iron will be plus three. So I'm writing here plus three. For oxygen, it is minus two. For CO, it is plus two minus two. For after reaction, it is zero. This is CO2. Now, two oxygen, that means total negative charge is minus four. Individual oxygen, it is again minus two same. Just like previously, you have seen minus two. But here it is plus four because total negative charge is minus. Now you can understand once you have written all this, not all the atoms are undergoing change in oxidation number. There is change in oxidation number only for iron from plus three, now it is zero. There is also change in oxidation number for carbon, but there is no change with respect to oxygen. So it is only Fe and C. Now in the next step, what we will do? Identify those atoms where there is change in oxidation number. So we have already identified it is not oxygen, only iron and carbon there is change in oxidation. Uh, sorry, oxidation number is changed. So with respect to iron, it is reduction. With respect to carbon, it is oxidation because it has lost electron. So now we will write only uh, plus three is zero, plus two, plus one. Reduction, this is oxidation. Now, in this case, uh, next, what we'll do as we have already identified the oxidation number, next thing we have to see that uh, the difference in oxidation now. So, in the first case, the difference is 3 to 0. So, here the difference is uh, 0 minus 3, right? So, 0 minus 3, it will be minus 3. In the second case, final is 4, initial is 2. That means it is 4 minus 2. So in this case, it is plus 2. So what I am trying to say, here change in oxidation number is minus 3. In this case, it is plus 2. Now we have to make it same. That will be the next. Use coefficient to make the total increase in oxidation number equal to total decrease in oxidation number. So in the previous slide, what you have seen, 
it is minus 3. So minus 3 and plus 2, how we will make it same? So if we multiply it with, uh, uh, if we multiply 2, what we will get? We will get minus 6. And here if I multiply 3, I will get plus 6. So now see these two are same. Sign will not be same, but I am talking about the numerical value. Now it is minus 6 plus 6. So this you have to do. So for uh, this species, it is plus 3, 0. So it should be minus 3 into 2. So this should be plus 2 into 3. Now it is plus 6. Now we will put coefficient. What I am trying to say by coefficient, as I have multiplied uh, 2, so I will put uh, multiplied by 3 for in case of 0 and I have multiplied, uh, sorry, in this case I have multiplied 3 and in this case I have multiplied 2. Okay, so what I will do, now before the atom I will write the coefficient. So here I will write 2. But don't write 2 before this is uh, this Fe203 because it is already balanced. 2 Fe right hand side, here also it is 2. But what about CO2? Here I have multiplied it with 3. So that is why now I will write it here 3. Here also I will write 3. Then only both sides carbon will be same. Now finally, uh, sorry, it is not the third step. By mistake, and same statement is written. So once it is done, what type of reaction we are getting? I will simply write it. I am getting equation Fe2O3 plus 2CO. Okay, let me write it first, this type of arrow, because it, still we do not know whether it is balanced or not. Next, what we will do, finally we will check whether all the atoms are same or not. So we have two iron before after. We have three oxygen, two oxygen. That means total five oxygen, right? And in this case, we, uh, sorry, it is three, not two. So here we have total six oxygen before reaction, left hand side. Here also we have six oxygen, uh, right hand side. With respect to carbon also, it is same. So all the atoms are same. So I can remove this and I can write equal sign. So this will be the final state. But in this case, it is uh, just after putting this coefficient, directly we are getting balanced. But if it is not happening, then you just have to check whether uh, further any change we should do it or not. So in this case, we have already obtained the balanced equation after simply putting the coefficient, but it may not be same in all the cases. So be very careful. Once you have added the coefficient here we have added two for iron pieces and we have written three before co and co2 for this uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide before fe2o3 we don't have mentioned two because it is already fe2o3 so only before iron we have written two and now we have reached the balanced equation but if you are still not getting the balance then you have to uh, that is, if you have to check, the atoms are same both sides or not. So further, uh, one step may be there depending on uh, if uh, still balanced equation are not okay. Now, one more information is that in this reaction, it is not specifically mentioned that whether it is basic medium or acidic medium. Basically, it is neutral medium reaction. But in some cases, there may be acidic medium reaction or basic medium reaction. So in this case, what you will do? If there is any reaction which is in acidic medium, then to balance the oxygen atom both side, we can add required number of H2. Suppose there is seven oxygen atom in the right hand side, eight oxygen atom in the left hand side, fine. So what we will do, we will write one more H2O in the right hand side. So now that both side there is eight oxygen. But when you are doing so, you have also added two hydrogen extra. So the first step, if it is acidic medium, balance the oxygen atom by adding required number of water molecules to that side which is deficient. So in this case, 
it is deficient in the right hand side so that is why i have written 1h2 then balance the hydrogen atom by adding h plus so as i have written h2 we have to balance hydrogen by writing h plus as it is acidic medium you can do it like this if you are writing h plus it doesn't matter but suppose if it is basic medium what you will do in that case also first balance the atoms as it is done in case of acidic medium same method so here also if uh, suppose the right hand side oxygen is less uh, then add water and you also add h plus just like this but as it is basic medium you cannot write h plus so to balance this h plus further you have to add equal number of ho both side so see what i will do i will now write to balance this h plus two extra ho minus both side same thing i am adding both side now this together it will be converted to neutral water molecule and ho minus will be still there as it is because it is basic medium so if it is present it doesn't matter really so that is why when it is basic medium first balance the atoms as it is done in acidic medium then for each h plus add equal number of ho minus to both side of the equation and where h plus and ho minus together just combine it to make some h2 so if it is 2h or 2h plus there will be two water molecule now there will be a specific reaction this one today we will not be able to complete it so i will uh, solve this reaction remember this reaction it is it occurs in basic medium so we will balance this reaction it is in ionic form also we will balance it by oxidation number method keeping in mind that it is in basic medium so we just follow whatever rules are mentioned here but that will be in the next class okay so we are ending the session here thank you for listening